Hey pals, I'm here today with some summer reading recommendations. We've just entered summer in the Northern Hemisphere, which is where I live and where I know the majority of my subscribers live. And so yeah, I thought people might like to hear some great books to read during the summer. I gave all of these four or five stars. A lot of them take place during the summer, but if they don't, they take place in like warmer locations. If you do live in the Southern Hemisphere, then obviously you can save this recommendation video for your summer, or if you don't mind reading out of season, you can pick some of these books up now anyway. So the first one I'm going to mention, I just finished yesterday, I read this in two days, it's been really nice and sunny here, so it's really fit the vibe, and I wasn't actually expecting this to be a summer read, but it ended up being one. And that is Father of the Rain by Lily King. I've read her three most recent books and really enjoyed them, so I'm trying to go back, so this is her third published book, and I definitely intend to read her other two. This opens in, I think, the early 80s in New England, and we're following this young 11-year-old girl called Daly, as her mother decides to leave her father, and go stay with her parents for the summer. They live on like a lakeside house and she takes Daly away for two months and we follow that initial summer with Daly um, sort of living with her mother on this lakeside house for a couple of months and then going back to stay with her father. It's like super like New England vibes. They have a pool in their garden. There's always loads of people around at their pool. They always have pool parties. Her father is a member of the local tennis club so she's always there playing tennis. And you follow that first summer and then you jump about 10 years and follow uh, another summer when her father has been estranged from her for like many many years and he's always been an alcoholic but it's got much worse and she has to go back and care for him and there is a third segment which is like much shorter and I'm, I'm not really sure what season that takes place in but the two that matter the majority of the novel are across these two summers that really change the dynamic she has with her father and also massively shape who she is. This is such a summer read because these things take place in the summer but also the location she's in is very centered around the season so um, lots of tourists come during the summer season and just people do really different activities and you really get a sense of how her father really lives for the summers. You know, he loves being out by the pool, he loves hosting parties and playing at the tennis club. This is a really great, quite quiet novel about the devastating effects that divorce can have on a child when the parents don't handle it correctly. And I found it really bingy and I really enjoyed it, so I'd definitely recommend it. While I'm there, I may as well stick in a similar location with The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Hurler. I absolutely love this book. This is one of my favorite reads of last year. And this takes place in the two timelines, one 24 hours during a summer on Cape Cod, and the other timeline is over the course of our protagonist's life as she sort of looks back and looks back on how she got to this day. So in this day period, she has just had sex with her um, like best friend who she's had a sort of long unrequited love with, um, and she's had sex with him very close to where her husband and his wife are enjoying like a family meal. And during the course of these 24 hours, she's having to decide whether she wants to stay with her husband in this really steadfast relationship, or whether she wants to take the risk and like fracture their family by pursuing a romance with her closest friend. And then you look back, like I said, over the years of her life, and a lot of her life, a lot of the um, sort of pivotal moments in her life took place at what they call the Paper Palace, which is their holiday home on Cape Cod. So an awful lot of the book takes place there. Um, you know, she has like sailing lessons. She spends a lot of time with her friends beside all the lakes. You get a real sense of how separate from their life they feel during the summer, how it's a complete escape for them, but also how this place of escape holds some really horrible dark secrets for this protagonist. I will say um, this book 100% has trigger warnings for um, assault of a minor and sexual assault so do look up content warnings for those things because this isn't an easy read at certain points. I found this really compulsive and I found the sense of place immaculate so if you want to pretend you're on Cape Cod for the summer definitely pick this one up. The next one I'm going to recommend I actually read two summers ago and I listened to this one on audio and I still remember exactly where I was when I listened to the last few pages because this was such a wonderful experience and that is Silver Sparrow by Tayari Jones. This book is set in I think the early 80s in Atlanta, Georgia, and we follow predominantly these two sisters. However, the first half of the book is told by one of the sisters, and she knows that her father is a bigamist because she knows that he is married to her mother but also married to her sister's mother. 
And she views herself and her mother as the secret family and she views her sister and her sister's mother as the public family. So she tells the first half of the story and then the second half of the story, the public sister takes over. And this book opens at a summer when they are I think around 16 years old and they're starting to consider what they want to do in terms of university and also getting their first jobs and they start coming into a lot of conflict. The secret sister knows about it, the public sister completely unaware because like they want to apply for jobs at the same location, they want to go to the same college and so their father keeps telling the secret sister you can't have these things because that's where my other daughter's going to go and I don't want you two to meet each other. And it's about um, the sort of frustration and their like relationship, their dynamic getting to this boiling point during this one summer and how all of their stories intertwine. This is also a brilliant description of the two mothers. I thought this was a wonderful character study, um, both of the two sisters, their mothers, their father and their father's best friend. Um, just all excellently portrayed characters and I felt so much compassion and empathy with all of them. I think she's incredibly skilled at making you see something from everybody's perspective and also I absolutely love how she writes about the way people look and feel and smell, you can completely picture every room and every person she describes, like she does it so effortlessly, so I really love this one. And while we're talking about sisters, I'm going to stick with sisters, and I'm pretty sure this one is also set in the 80s, but this one is set in Pennsylvania, and that is A Crooked Tree by Una Mannion. So this book opens at the start of the summer when a mother is driving her four children home from school, four or five, um, all bar one of which are sisters and one of the children who was around 11 I think starts to like just kick off she's being really naughty so the mum pulls over makes her get out of the car and tells her she has to walk home it's several miles from home they live in a sort of wooded hilly area and there's like no street lights and it's getting dark she doesn't come home until hours later and she's um, injured and she tells her siblings that a man picked her up and like put his hand on her leg and she thought he was going to kidnap her so she jumped out of the vehicle whilst it was moving. The siblings decide to keep all this from their mother because they don't really trust her. They have quite a complicated relationship with their mother which is really interesting to read about. And they then tell a friend who's sort of viewed as like a local rebel. They describe this man to their friend and the plot goes from there. I don't really want to reveal any more than that. This is a, a fairly dark novel at the same time as being a really sweet coming of age story and this is set over the course of that summer when our protagonist I think is around the age of 14 or 15 but she feels quite young for her age, quite naive. There's a lot that you understand as the reader that she doesn't understand and you follow her doing typical things like um, having like a, a late night party with like stolen beer with her friends and running away when the cops turn up to like make them leave the area but also this ever-present fear she has that this man could be coming back to try and take her sister or could be coming back to try and like punish them for telling on him this is an excellent novel beautifully written the descriptions of the like local landscape are stunning and yeah, I absolutely love this one. The next one is a much earlier publication than all the other books I'm going to mention, and that is The Feast by Margaret Kennedy. This came out in 1950, and it's set in the summer of 1947 at Cornish, like, seaside town. At the outset of the book, you're told that a B&B &B that was right on the cliff edge has um, collapsed um, because of a landslide, and that seven of the people staying there have perished. And then you go back in time to a couple of weeks before, I think, and the novel is then told from all the different characters' perspectives who are staying at this B&B, &B, including the family who run the place. And you're sort of trying to figure out, oh, like, who would have been in the B&B &B when the landslide happened? And who do you want to be in there? Like, who do you want to have survived and who do you want not to have survived? These characters are really individual and memorable. And like I said, some of them you really don't like and some of them you think, God, if they died, it would be much better for the other characters left behind. There are a couple of sets of children in this story who I found really funny and heartwarming and endearing. And there's all these different groups of people. Um, lots of the people who run the B&B are quite unlikable. Um, and there's a couple of women who are staying there, like and men who are just awful. And yeah, they're all really funny. This is a really cozy book, one that would be like really nice to just read, like maybe, of like a summer evening in your garden like this would go wonderfully if you wanted to like sit out in your garden with like a picture of like 
homemade lemonade or like scones with quite a cream and jam it would be amazing so yeah really recommend this one super cozy and i really enjoyed it and the next one i've read a couple of times and it's absolutely beautiful and that is this one summer by jillian and mariko tamaki this is a graphic novel and it's all in like a lovely lilac wash it's very very pretty and this is just wonderful so this is about a young girl called rose who every summer goes away to start this like beachside cabin with her family and every summer she meets her friend windy there and they've sort of grown up together throughout these summers uh, but they're at that age, I think they're around 12, so they're just about to turn teenagers, so they think they know everything, but they really know very little. And Rose's family is having some difficulties, which are like spoken about throughout the graphic novel. I don't want to spoil anything, but maybe go look up content warnings just in case. And it's about the fact that Rose doesn't really understand these things, and in order to sort of protect herself from the sadness, she starts to be quite judgmental about other girls their age or a little bit older and that's because she's learning those things from society around them like learning that you should call girls sluts um, and learning that the male gaze is like more important than anything when her friend Wendy is like a really refreshing sort of counterbalance to that because she's raised by a sort of bohemian single mother who um, just believes in like freedom of expression and um, being kind and non-judgmental and it's about then getting to a point where they start to have these important conversations during the course of this summer and I really enjoyed it and highly recommend it. Another recent read is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Quakey Mezzi. This is such a perfect summer read. You may have heard about this one already. This is about a young woman who several years before lost her partner in a car accident and she's really struggled with the grief and since then hasn't had sex with any men or like had relationships with anyone. And it's about her starting to try these things again and she meets a man who invites her to stay in Jamaica um, with him and his father so she can take on like this art exhibition because she's a successful artist and the majority of the books takes place on this island it is beautifully described like the landscape is just luscious uh, this is a really wonderful romance like filled with emotion the food descriptions are brilliant as well and yeah this just felt like a perfect summer read like I'm not someone who goes on like poolside holidays because I don't really like the sun but if I was this would definitely be a book I would consider taking so if you are going on a poolside holiday and this is one of those books that you've been considering taking definitely do I think it would be perfect for that another one I have is Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss this is a really short read and I think I would actually reread this one this summer because I read this when it came out and I read it in one sitting in an evening and I, I remember it being dark so it definitely wasn't during the summer I held my breath throughout reading this book, I felt so tense. So this is about a young girl, I think who's around 16 maybe, and her father is sort of an amateur archaeologist and he decides to take his wife and his daughter on this holiday up to northern England, I think, Northumberland, um, to take part in an experimental archaeology project with um, a professor who has brought some of his students along. Her father is a sort of controlling abusive man so this is a tense read for that reason and it's about how she starts to feel when that dynamic with her father is watched by other people because like I said they're staying with these other um, young adults and this professor and also how when his father is sort of in his element surrounded by all this stuff he finds really historically interesting he and also the other men around him get really consumed by it and the things they start to think they can do and are allowable because they feel really separate from society this is excellent the descriptions of the natural world are beautiful and like I said really really tense just a perfect slice of life and also a really great examination of how pivotal like just a few weeks can be so like highly recommend this one the next one is a little bit off brand for me but i really enjoyed it and that is legend born by tracy dion so this is a wire fantasy which i don't read many of but i absolutely love this one i couldn't put it down i was like gasping in all the right places now this does have some insta love in it this does have a love triangle that features like the brooding dark bad boy and the like muscular blonde good boy <laughs> so like you know ticking lots of the tropes here however i really enjoyed this i couldn't put it down i loved all the twists and i actually felt that the magic system had some interesting commentary that i just found really well crafted so the premise of this is we're following i think 16 year old brie who has been invited to attend like an early college acceptance program 
I can't remember if this is take place in like September or like across the course of the summer but either way it's got like this back to school vibes which I always associate with like late summer and she basically sees like a magical attack happen like when she first gets to campus and she finds out that there is a secret society that are the descendants of the Knights of the Round Table and yeah shit goes crazy she starts to find out all sorts of dark secrets and realizes that perhaps she has like some links to this magical world that she never knew existed this was great like the reveals were banging i literally couldn't believe when they kept coming and i cannot wait for the next one i'll definitely be rereading this one in preparation for the next one coming out the next one is perhaps the biggest cheat but perhaps my favorite of all of these i absolutely really love this book again i listened to this one on audio and i remember precisely where i was at certain points of this book highly recommend the audio and that is Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo. The reason this is a cheat is because this doesn't take place in summer that I remember. This book is a split narrative. We are following um, Barrington Jedediah Walker, Barrett to his friends, who's 74 and he lives in Hackney in London. And we're following him and we are told fairly quickly that he has been unhappily married to his wife for many, many years, but has been having a secret relationship with his best friend since they were young schoolboys, and has completely hidden from everybody around him that he's gay. And he's reached a point in his life, his friends reached a point in his life where they're not sure if they can go on living how they have been and sort of like stopping themselves from having like true joy and contentment in their lives. So part of the novel is told from that perspective and you see how the decisions that Barry makes really shape the people around him, including his two adult daughters. And then the other section of the novel is told from his wife's perspective and those sections are told back when they were like young in like their late teens early 20s when they met together in Antigua which is where they're from and both sections are absolutely beautiful and the reason I think about this one when I think of summer is not just because some sections take place in a hot country but because this is one of the most like joyful novels I've ever read. I read very few novels that are like truly joyful and um, I really enjoy like family dramas and family dramas usually come with some heartache and this one certainly does like in particular his wife who's called Carmel I think yes Carmel has had quite a sad life um you know with the sort of portion of himself that Barry's been willing to give up. She thinks he's been having like many affairs with women throughout their marriage and she's desperately unhappy. So there are sad points in this novel. But yeah, Barry feels like such a joyful character and the way in which like Carmel describes like her friends um, and the community around her are just beautiful and full of like warmth and compassion. This just feels like a super uplifting read ultimately and I think that goes really well with the summer months so I'd highly recommend that you pick this one up if you haven't read it already. So as I started with the book I just finished I thought I'd end with the book I read 10 years ago so I don't think I've ever spoken about this on the channel because I read it before I had the channel and that is The Little Friend by Donna Tartt. Now I know Donna Tartt is absolutely loved and adored but this book out of her three is the least spoken about and the least well regarded. This has got like 3.50 on Goodreads as a rating which is mad for Donna Tartt. The reason I think a lot of people don't enjoy this book is because my edition is around 550 pages, it has the smallest font ever and it is relatively plotless and I think when you hear me tell you the blurb you're going to be like oh that sounds really intriguing and like there's going to be loads of plot. There isn't. The premise is this is set in I think the 1970s in Mississippi and we follow 12 year old Harriet and Right before she was born, she had a brother who was murdered in quite a brutal way. I don't remember if you're told about how he was murdered at the start of the book, so I'm not going to spoil it, but his murder has always been a mystery and they never knew how it like physically happened, like how no one witnessed it, and also they never knew who did it and if there was any motive. And Harriet's decided, like she's inspired by like Harriet the Spy and things like that, she's decided that she's going to solve it. Um, and she's decided that this summer is when she'll do it and so she basically just starts to investigate all the dark goings on in her sort of local area and what I remember of this is you, you effectively follow this 12 year old and a friend she enlists just like going round the town out on their bikes so these really dusty hot areas and just snooping and they like break into people's houses they find out lots of like dark secrets of all the different people who live there some of these things they don't understand the age they are but you as the reader do and there's two really distinct scenes I remember from this book and one of them I definitely can't talk about because it's a spoiler but I'll just say if you've read it the water tower like I don't have an excellent memory but I completely remember how like 
filled with dread I felt during that scene and how like claustrophobic and like scary it was intense um, and there's also a scene to do with snakes in this that like really put me on edge and I've never forgotten it. I love this book I genuinely think out of the list of all of these books this is the book I think of the most when I think of summer books this is so drenched in the heat it feels oppressive um, this is like super you know it's on a tart, it's super southern, um, it really embraces all those discussions, like there's lots of discussions about class um, and racism within the um, American South and yeah I, I thought this was absolutely brilliant and like I said it just is dripping with summer heat so I absolutely love this. Definitely want to reread it now I've been talking about it and yeah if you've read it I'd love to hear your thoughts. So that's my last recommendation. So I'd love to know if you've read any of these books and if so what your thoughts were and I'd also love to have some more recommendations for summer reads down below. Like I said I don't feel like I read enough of them so I'd love to read more. I have quite a few that I've got on my list this summer so if you're interested let me know if you'd like to see me do like a summer themed TBR video because I could mention the ones I already planned and then maybe if you recommend me some books I like the sound of I could also include those in that video. So yeah let me know. Thanks for watching, I hope you've got some recommendations from this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!